Yo, what's happening? It's your boy Turnip coming at you again. Uh, this one's uh, time to celebrate. I've got 11 subs now. Thanks to all you wonderful humans out there. Shout out to my boy Scott. S-K-O-T. Been commenting on my vids. Appreciate you, homie. We got a 3v3 on Frontier today. I thought I'd talk about kind of the state of the game, too. What's been going on um, in Halo Wars 2. There hasn't been a whole lot on like updates of what's going to actually happen with this game down the road. Um, I hope they keep updating it because I think they've done a really good job with it, to be honest with you. 343 is really kind of... They, they've showed a lot of love uh, to Halo Wars. I mean, they didn't really update the first one that much, Halo Wars 1, but they've added a lot, a lot of content, a lot of leaders to Halo Wars 2, and most recently, the Fort Jordan map. Uh, which they're still they're still working out the kinks for it but hopefully we'll see it in matchmaking pretty soon as of today is i think it's may 6th 2019 um and yeah multiplayer overall in halo wars 2 i'd say it's it's fairly balanced i think there's some things that are kind of hard to deal with but overall i still have a lot of fun with it some of my favorites. I really like to play Anders. Uh, in this game, uh, it's a 3v3. I play Atriox. He's probably one of my favorite banished leaders. I love playing the banished. I think they're tons of fun. Um, yeah, especially in 3v3s. I'm pretty terrible at 1v1s in this game, so I like to play 3v3s a lot more. I think it's, I think it's a lot more fun because you just got a lot more going on and you got to uh, react to different people's strategies. So, um, all right. Yeah, anyways, here we go. Into the game. Uh, we got Atriox and who else is on my team? Oh, we'll figure that out. But anyways, it's me versus them. I'm going to try to take early node control, get some grunts out on the map, get my buildings upgraded. Uh, I'm going to use Atriox's, I think Atriox's big strength, definitely expoing early because of his fortifications upgrade. Um, and yeah, that's what I'm going to try to do here is just go for a, a boom, really, and just get my resources up as fast as I can and take a second base because, yeah, I want to get on tech two really quickly and also get my late game units out. Um, I'd say the uh, most difficult thing to deal with right now in the metagame could be air. I think a lot of people overuse it. Uh, and you'll see in this game kind of what I mean. There's a lot of players I see always just spamming air. And I mean, air is good, don't get me wrong, but I think a lot of people don't really understand how to use it properly. Um, I feel it's best when it's mixed in with other units, like a maybe a majority air army. And then at the same time, you know, you've got some ground counter units as well. Whereas a lot of players just spam all air. And to be honest, if you can't fight it really, like if you're if you got a bad leader combo, you it's it's tough to tough to fight that because air can just melt melt anything really in this game. Uh, so we've got I think a Johnson on the other team. We've got a Decimus. A Johnson on our team. We're fighting a Decimus and I think two forges. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Um, but yeah, you can see they exploded pretty early. And I'm going to push up on this here. I thought I didn't think he was going to upgrade it that quickly. So I'm probably not going to continue this. But, you know, just annoy him a bit. See what I can do. And yeah, I'm on my second tech. And I have exploded already. So I am... I'm looking good. I'm trying to stay up there. Keep... Uh, yeah, keep chugging away. Uh, the The biggest gripe I have with three v threes is probably the the skill gap between players. Um, we've all been there. If you've played any RTS game, really like online, and you randomly search for your teammates, you usually get well people who really don't know what they're doing. In a lot of cases, but I think this game, these my teammates were fairly competent. And as for the enemy, so it was a it was a good time. I had I had fun. 
and you can see yellow is doing a pretty early push on my blue friend here which is honestly it's not a bad idea on their part because they got him right when he yeah they they caught him by the balls basically right there there's not too much he can do um i sh i wasn't looking over there but yeah he's targeting down um the armory there and i'm gonna try to move in and support uh, i'm gonna try to help him push this off and i'm getting my my expo up right now and you can see I'm going raid camp and haul this game. But yeah, these these turrets are just gonna melt the rest of them. But yeah, if they had a little, if he had a little more help from his friends, I don't know if he would have, he would have probably dropped a bunch of these buildings. But nevertheless, but yeah. Oh, it was a Jerome. That's what it was. Jerome. He's also played a lot. See a lot of a lot of people build Jerome and then build Hornets. Also, I've been getting Mantis attacked by um, Johnson, as well as Decimus, who is very very strong right now. Um, yeah, Decimus Banshees right now. Yeah, that's that's all I've got to say really. If you if you know a lot, I mean you've. You kind of know where I'm going with this already. They're really strong, and the fact they can just heal themselves too. Tech 3 Decimus Banshees are just, they're just not to be messed with. You can only really fight them, I guess, if you've got a mass anti-air or, you know, other Decimus Banshees as well. But I actually, um, I was Decimus not too long ago, and I, I went mass Banshees, and I actually lost to an Atriox. And how, what he did was he built grunts. He had fully upgraded grunts. And I kind of underestimated grunts for a while. Um, yeah, it was just really hard to deal with because he had so many grunts. Like fully upgraded grunts, don't sleep on them. Yeah, that and Reavers too, combine those together with some other units and yeah, you'll be looking good. Yeah, I, I've never really implemented many grunts into my army before. I didn't really see the point. But I guess it's kind of the same with UNSC Marines right now. The Marines are really strong, especially with Mike, like Jerome Mastodon or Cutter. Cutter is very, 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 very OP in the meta right now. A lot of people have been using his ODSTs. And um, he's got really good options for pushing bases too, especially um, with his close air support. He can basically just destroy any base he wants to uh yeah 1v1s i've been watching some and yeah a lot of people have been using cutter cutter jerome um to climb that ladder there so i'm pushing up here i got a nice little ground army hunters i love hunters they're probably my favorite unit to use i just love the way that they they look and walk and i, I think they did a i like the way they they did the units in this game they look really really cool i wish the bases looked a little different but it's kind of been growing on me, to be be honest with you. I wasn't a big fan of this game at first, and I've been playing a lot of Definitive Edition. Um, but overall, I think it's I think it's good. So you can see the Reds pushing up here, and I'm trying to counterattack right now. I'm getting Pack Brother. That's the final upgrade for Grunts, and I'm just kind of pushing in right now. Uh, he's got a lot of turrets, so I don't know if this will be the best. But I've got some engineers as well to hold it back so I'm gonna try to do some some damage and you can see they're just going mass air right now so I think I pull back yeah it's just I want to cut my losses here because there's a, a yeah yeah it's not looking good for us green just lost his expo and yeah the beginning of this game did not it, it's just not going well it's not looking too too good um, but yeah orange is all air yellow is all air right now and a lot of 3v3 players just, yeah, they just spam mass air. And it can be tough to deal with, uh, especially if you don't really know what to do. But that's kind of why I invested in the grunts, because you know, Halo Wars, it's a rock, paper, scissors game type. Oh, they're attacking my base. Rock, paper, scissors. So infantry beats air. Air beats vehicles and vehicles beat infantry. That's the the kind of premise about it. So all the units are balanced that way, and 
Also, broken leader powers as well. They've added that into the mix. That's kind of just in the center. Leader powers beat everything. Um, yeah, glassing beam. If you didn't, if you read the patch notes, they're going to be nerfing glassing beam pretty soon because it just it just melts. Like you, you'll see a few times in this game, just people you, leader powers are so so strong. You can wipe out a base or an, an enemy army if you're halfway across the map. Uh, I love passive powers on um, on on RTS leaders. I I'm kind of a not very micro heavy player. I think I'm more macro, whereas I like to build up and not worry about dropping down powers and things like that. So I prefer passive powers. So I guess Decimus would be a, one of my second favorites because he has so many passive powers that just apply to your units regardless of you using them or not. Um, yeah, game's just going, it's kind of stabilizing here. We're taking our bases back and getting um, getting rebuilt here. I'm transitioning more into air right now because I built up my ground army. And yeah, they didn't really push on us when they should. Like, they let us get kind of rebuilt. But granted, they probably weren't unarranged, meaning that they weren't in team together. But they definitely let us get this built back up. Like, Green was, they had him by the throat. And they kind of just let him go. I don't know if they had enough units to do that. But yeah, they, they kind of just, <clears throat> they let, let us have the snowball again. So, uh, so I could say. Him, <clears throat> him. But yeah, guys, if you're if you've been watching this far, thanks again for stopping by. Uh, I've been enjoying making a lot of videos, and doing it for you guys. Hopefully, we can get some uh, get some games going with with people who like to watch. That'd be that'd be pretty cool to have some commentary on. Uh, games played with uh, some viewers so yeah if you're ever interested in playing just leave me a comment and I'd definitely love to um, add you and then uh, we could do some we could do some 3v3s or 2v2s we could play Halo Wars 1 um, or yeah I've, I've got a lot of other games too so I'd really like to make a lot of videos and grow um, other than that back to the game where Kind of pushing in on yellow. You can see they're still going really heavy into the air. And I get eradicate. And we're gonna push in on this yellow guy here. And I get a really nice eradicate off it. It's not as OP and broken as it was when the game first came out. Because I remember when the game first came out, me and my friend we would just eradicate a base twice and it would just die. Now they reduce the, the base damage a little bit to it, so it kind of just strips the base. But still it can be it can be devastating. And I'm getting my, I'm just slowly, slowly upgrading. Um, I remember a quote, if you guys ever play, um, have played Smash Bros. Uh, there's a player in Smash Bros, he's a competitive player. Uh, his name's Mango. I think it was Mango who said that, but um, one of his, uh, his quotes he said was, don't get hit. And the way I apply that to the situation in, in an RTS game, Try not to lose units. Try not to get really hit. Because if you get hit way too much, you're just not going to have enough to really do anything in the long term. If you want to really win in the long term, try to save those units as much as you can. Be smart about where you put them. And don't just you know rally them to the other side of the map and have them just get wrecked immediately. Uh, I've definitely been a victim of that. And yeah, I thought that was a, I thought that was, you could apply that quote to a lot of different things. Just don't get hit. Don't, don't lose things. Don't lose units. Like if, like for right here, be, be smart about it. You know, if you know you can take the fight, absolutely go for it. But if you think that it might not be worth it, just back off, re go back under your shield and just hold out and get your upgrades. Your upgrades are so important your um your you know a lot of people i'm 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 assuming i guess i can't really say for sure but i would have the feeling a lot of people don't focus too much on upgrading their units versus building them um 
I'm a big advocate of having the units first and then upgrading them. But upgrading them is still important. Um, if and so if you have a bunch of units and you have to keep rebuilding them and you never have um, the full pop like like I do here, you can never really overcome you know three decent players. Um, yeah, have that army and then get your upgrades, build them up behind there, and try not to lose anything. Um, and yeah, here I get in the little engagement. Atriox, I love that invincibility. I, you see, I've got a level two, uh, level two chosen. I don't think I, I don't. I think I bought rifled barrel already, but Atriox's chosen is also so strong. The stun, the um, just the damage he puts out is just it's just really, really strong, especially in the late game. And I had an Isabel on my team, that's right. I don't know too much about Isabel. I feel she's very underutilized, just because a lot of people don't know how to play her. She has really strong um, tank options. She can get, you know, uh, have, I think it was rolling metal or something, where her tanks are really cheap and they produce a lot faster. So, I, yeah, I'd, I'd be surprised, or I'd say, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some Isabel buffs coming soon. Um, to see what kind of change in the metagame because I never see people play Isabel. And Orange is pushing up, still going really heavy air. So I'm kind of transitioning away from Grunts right now and building more Reavers um, because Grunts are good, but they just don't have the mobility to really catch up to the air sometimes. And that's probably air's strongest thing is the mobility because you can just... If let's say you're out of position, you can just melt a base, um, melt a base, and then leave, and then you could you just win by basically crippling their economy because they can't afford to rebuild. But yeah, reavers are really, really good against air. Obviously, they're anti-air. Uh, they don't do a lot of splash damage, which I don't know if that would be a good, good fix for them. Um, but yeah, reavers mixed with some grunts and then some other ground units. See, it's a good time and right here this guy's got trapped also I love the plasma torpedoes on the banshees I think it just destroys air that's why you know you always want to have like maybe six or seven banshees because for one they're in my opinion the strongest unit in the game the strongest base unit because a they they have a plasma torpedo so that that's a bonus against any air unit b they're naturally good against vehicles they naturally destroy things like tanks warthogs wraiths marauders reavers wolverines they 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 do so well against unupgraded anti-air um yeah banshees are just very very strong and then they can outmaneuver most most infantry so that's why i think they're really good red's getting wrecked over here he's just holding out though he's just kind of sandbagging them which i think is uh that's a good idea honestly uh he's is we're kind of both out of position i should have you know maybe devoted a little bit to help him but he looks like he's got it under control red's just kind of going in you know full blast there and yeah, I got beam cannon. I love that upgrade too. I think it's so cool to watch the hunters um, with the beam cannon. And yeah, I'm upgrading, just getting those upgrades. I've got my eradicate. I'm gonna wait for that before I go in. I'm gonna wait for enough supplies to use my eradicate. And there's a ghost in the machine right there. Really, really cool ability. You don't see used very much because you know nobody plays Isabel, but that's her final ability to take over enemy units. So I'm just waiting a little bit more here. I'm about to push up, waiting for some units coming. I'm just about full pop, so full pop and full, um, yeah, full units. I'm gonna eradicate the base. Um, this probably wasn't the best idea to push in because there's just so much I've got to fight right now. So I bulwark, and I don't know if it would have been better to just uh, aim down the base. But yeah, 
I'm just kind of fighting the base and his units. Never a good time. Never, you never really want to be in that position unless you have to be or you're backed up with somebody because you can see I just get shredded here. But that classing beam though, it's so good. And just like that, I get wrecked. And I'm thinking, well, I don't know what I'm gonna do now. So, yeah, I kinda overextended is the perfect word. Definitely overextended right there. Tried to go in and go in it alone. Um, I had a lot of grunts in there, which, you know, it's not, it wasn't the ideal fight for grunts. You know, on the defensive, if you got grunts, I think that's that's okay. But not really on the offensive. I didn't use my shrapnel mines either. And then Green's defending up there still. Holding out strong. My boy Green. And yeah, I'm just kind of licking my wounds and getting getting my population back up. Gonna focus heavy in or heavier into late game units. Uh, Red invested heavily into Warthogs, which I don't think was very smart. Especially 20 minutes into the game, Warthogs are just not going to do enough damage to um, anything, really. They're not like Halo 1 Warthogs, or I mean Halo Wars 1 Warthogs, that is. I really think that, um, yeah, you would have wanted to build something like Scorpions or Grizzlies, just for the health that they have. Um, yeah, it's just not ideal, in my opinion. And then Red's getting attacked again. You can just see, they, they're not going to do enough base damage in time to actually kill this base. You know, Warthogs and uh, Wolverines, they're just not going to do much. Because they're just going to get shredded by Kodiaks. Yeah, and I'm kind of out on the other side too, doing my, doing my thing. Just pushing in on the Expos. It's kind of a risky situation. You want to be you want to be careful that you don't lose those new units you have, but I was kind of feeling adventurous, you know, just feeling it out, just checking around, because I was not the main focus right now. I was just, uh, yeah, the the opponents they, they they played okay. I commend them for it, but yeah, definitely could have been played better by by both of us, and that's what we do. We just we just get better, you know, we improve. I just have been having a lot of fun playing. I. Uh, yeah, Halo Wars, I don't know what's about it. It's kept me playing for years. Maybe it's just the simplicity of it, or the the basics of the uh, the gameplay, or the Halo atmosphere, because I am a huge Halo fan, if you didn't know that. But I don't know. It's just something I always really loved. So I'm going to kind of come around from the behind this time, Take orange from the from uh, from behind. <laughs> a little in, in, innuendo for you there, and I catch some really good catch here. Find him kind of transitioning over to grab an expo, and I catch both of these vultures. Vultures are not used at all. I never see people use them, and it's a shame because I think they're a good unit. And I see that he's out of position right now. His units are over there, so I'm going to go in here while he's over there. You know, split up my my guys. Because he's going to have to waste time coming back to defend, and I can get some free base damage and then leave if I need to. I'm going to kill these turrets and try to target down some air pads. And I'm going to get wrecked. But I notice he's not coming back, because he definitely would have been here by now. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, he's either going to do that or try to base trade base trade somebody. If you can see on the mini-map, Red's base is getting wrecked as well while I'm over here. Um, so Orange is definitely up to no good, being uh, nefarious. Red is over there getting wrecked. And uh, yeah, I pulled off of his main base just because I didn't have enough DPS to really kill it. I had a lot of, you know, anti-units, so not really a lot of DPS units. I'd love to see people use jump pack, jump pack brutes more, and then locust the swell. And here comes orange. And this is this is a part where I say leader powers are just crazy good. Like watch this. So one, he's EMP. Now I've got level two glassing beam, and just look how much damage that does. Literally killed probably seventy, 
70 population with just that one. And yeah, we're definitely gonna be able to stop this. Uh, yeah, it's just a. I don't know. Tell, tell me what you think. If you think that's overpowered or not, or what they should do about it. Because, um, yeah, that's the end of the game there. But it was fun. Let me know what you guys think, and uh, leave a sub. Uh, drop a sub. Drop a like. Until next time. Thanks, guys.